welcome to another advanced dialogue system tutorial. Now that we've got our system up and running, it's time for some polish. In this video, we'll add a typewriter effect that gradually displays text. We'll make it so you can click to advance text quickly, and we'll also make it so that your text doesn't disappear before you want it to. Let's get started. Now before we get started, I should note that much of this video is based on Trevor Mock's Typing Effect dialogue video. I've just made a few changes stylistically as well as adapted it to fit with this dialogue system. That said, be sure to check out Trevor's site as he's got lots of great tutorials there. Alright, so for us getting started today, we're going to head into the dialogue folder, go to scripts, and open up the advanced dialogue manager. All right, so the first thing we'll do is scroll down quite a ways here below our option method where we're gonna create a coroutine. This will be a private I enumerator. We'll call this one typewriter effect. Now we are gonna pass some information into this method and so we'll pass in a string called line. This is just gonna take the line of dialogue that we are currently working with. Now we're gonna start this method off by actually clearing out our current dialog text. We'll do this by typing dialog text dot text equals and we'll just put in an empty quotation marks. This will just make it so that when the box pops up there won't immediately be any text there. At this point we'll just create a very brief wait. I'm going to go with about 0.5 seconds to give the viewer a second to register the empty box before text appears. We'll then create a for each loop. Remember you can type for each and double tap tab to get the syntax. And what we want to do here is we actually want to get each character, we'll call them letter, that are in our line of code. And we're going to break that down and make an actual array of that. So to put them into an array, we'll type two care array. And this just gives us that list or array of each individual character so that we can loop through them one by one. Now at this point, we'll just make a little escape hatch here for the impatient viewer who wants to get through the text quickly so that if they push down the interact button, all of our dialogue text for that line will appear at once. At that point, we can just add a break here so that we don't continue to go through this coroutine as we've now got all of our text for that line appearing. However, if we have a more patient viewer and we want our typewriter effect to slowly display everything, we can then get our dialogue text to dot text to just add one letter at a time. So each time it loops through the array, it will add another letter from the array. Between each letter now, we're gonna make a pause, and this one's just gonna be equal to a variable we're gonna create called typing speed. And so the smaller the number for typing speed, the faster our typewriter will type. So let's pop up to the top. I'm just gonna put a little note here that this is variables for our typewriter effect. And we can make that private float called typing speed, and I'll just initialize it at 0 0.02 for now. Now you notice I set this as private, that's just because I don't want other scripts to be able to modify it. it, gives it a little extra protection, but we also need to be able to see it in the inspector. So I'll just serialize that field so that it appears public, but can't be accessed by other scripts. All right, so now with that all set up, we just need to actually call that coroutine. So let's head down to our play dialog method. And at the moment, down near the bottom is where all of the excitement is happening. This is where we check to see if there is more dialog left to display, and then we set our text. All we need to do here is just filter this through our typewriter effect. So we'll type in start coroutine, typewriter effect, and then we'll just add that old code into brackets so that we pass our line of dialogue that we want typed out into the new method. Now when we run our game, we'll find that things are mostly working. When we go up to our NPC, our dialogue does display beautifully one character at a time. However, if you tap the button, you'll notice some problems here as our text goes absolutely bonkers. And the reason for that is simply that we are starting our typewriter effect coroutine multiple times and it's just splicing together all of the letters. So what we need to do now is head back to our code and make sure that the coroutine can only run once. Fortunately, this is a pretty easy fix. We're just gonna start by creating a private variable. This is gonna be a coroutine variable called typewriter routine. And it's just gonna keep track of any routines we currently have running. So we can check if there's more than one. Pop down into our play dialog method. You'll notice here is where we call that coroutine. And just before we do that, and I'll put a little note here that we want to keep the routine from running multiple times. And to do that, we're just gonna perform a check first of all to see if the typewriter routine is not null. Now, null just means empty. So if it's not null, that means that it is already running. 
So if we get to this point and we find that there's already a typewriter routine running, then we want to stop the routine. Now in order for that to work, we actually have to identify when a typewriter routine is running. And so just before we start the routine, we're just going to say typewriter routine equals. This will still call the cool routine, but it will also store it in a variable so that we can check to see if the routine's already running before we call it. We're now incredibly close to being all finished. You'll notice our text is appearing nicely, except for my spelling mistake, and it's not messing up if I double tap. However, when I do click, you'll notice that we can skip through the text entirely without actually seeing anything. So we just want to add one final thing that will make it so that the text has to appear before you click, so that the viewer doesn't miss anything. All right, so to keep our text from advancing when we don't want it to, we're just going to make a private bool called can continue text, and we'll initialize it as true so that at the beginning, the text can be continued. In our update method then, we're just going to add this to our check so that if dialog's activated, we push the button and can continue text is enabled, we'll then start to play dialog. Now in our typewriter effect, we need to make sure that at the start of that method, can continue text is false. This makes it so that as text is being displayed, you can't actually skip to the next line. And then only once all the text appears, can you continue text. Now when I get in the game, I can rush the text along, but I can't make it disappear until it has fully displayed. Hope you found this video helpful. Until next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.